Uh, another uh, gentleman uh, who has a name that I also considered for my, my firstborn, his name is Zero Skull. You might read a story, you might travel through time, you might save a day or commit a crime. You never know on the Zero O Show, the Zero O Show, the Zero O Show. It's the Zero O Show episode 30 Sonic Years, made with milk from contented tigers. See Sonic the Hedgehog battered by Knuckles the Echidna. See a decent tiger handheld game featuring Sonic. See the worst version of Sonic 3, which is still better than Sonic 2006. See a tiny movie set, ready to go, but with poor lighting, and then with good lighting. Discover the thrill of gravitational physics. Find out why Sonic the Hedgehog figures suck. And more. I might always be wrong. Hey, hi, hello. Hey, what's going on? Hey, come on in. Yeah, have a seat. Go on. Hey, everybody. Hey. Hi. Hi, everybody, by which I mean you. Uh, welcome to the show. This is my Sonic the Hedgehog episode, but shooting has uh, concluded a little bit late. I was planning to do a different episode for today, but I'm going to... I had already been planning on that episode. It's a Black History episode, and that's going to happen at some other time. It's Juneteenth, so this is my Freedom episode, but it's actually my Sonic the Hedgehog episode. I'm not actually going to describe anything pertaining to Sonic the Hedgehog. I'm just going to uh, play a couple of uh, Sonic games and uh, explain to you why Sonic figures uh, suck. Uh, my uh, Black History episode will include uh, things such as uh, figures such as uh, Bass Reeves. Uh, who was the uh, real-life lawman upon whom the Lone Ranger is based, uh, Nancy Green, who was born a slave in the 1830s, was emancipated in the 1860s, uh, became a model in the 1870s in uh, the North, uh, in Chicago, uh, was then hired by, I can't think of the guy's name, to uh, act out, to perform as the model who would uh, be the figure Aunt Jemima, uh, she died very rich, born a slave, died very rich, really interesting story, and uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, who uh, discovered a uh, celestial association between the sun and New York City, uh, and various other uh, important uh, figures and events in black history. Uh, don't celebrate history learn history, and learn lessons from it. Celebrate freedom. Juneteenth is about freedom. Uh, and so I'm going to present my Juneteenth episode as my Sonic the Hedgehog episode. Uh, and I guess that's pretty much all I have to say about it, and I hope you uh, have a good time. Stick around. Uh, hopefully we'll have some fun. Bang. So I've got these three uh, Sonic the Hedgehog figures, and you'll notice that only one of them is standing up straight. You will notice that he is pointing at this piece of torn paper here. That paper is torn because there's a piece of tape there that I had removed and replaced and removed and replaced. The reason that there's a piece of tape there is because it is impossible for this figure to stand up straight. Here are two other uh, Sonic the Hedgehogs, and you will notice that they are both leaning forward. If I stand them up straight, see they have solid heads, and their heads <coughs> are heavier than the rest of their bodies, and they're off-center, and just drag them backward. So it's impossible to have a uh, Sonic the Hedgehog figure actually stand up straight. They have to be bent forward. And the only way to actually get a Sonic the Hedgehog to stand up straight is to uh, tape it down, or uh, they have holes in their feet there if you have uh, certain 
uh, stands or standees for them, uh, then they can stand up straight. But if you, hey, no, there we go, standing up straight, boom. And like it's just they have to be bent ever so slightly forward, <laughs> but they cannot stand up straight. Knuckles, he's fine. He's got these gigantic heavy feet. He's got these gigantic hands that are right in front of him. So that evens out his uh, modicum of uh, dreadlocks there. Oosh. But Sonic really cannot stand up straight. Uh, get him up straight. See that? He's standing straight. That's perfectly straight. And boom! <laughs> and so it's impossible to have a, a Sonic the Hedgehog figure stand up straight. If I was a little kid and I was playing with these things, it, w it would annoy me to no end that it was impossible to make Sonic stand up. Uh, and the only way to make him stand up is to uh, affix him to a uh, thing, either with tape or with a standee or a peg in his foot. <sighs> and that annoys me. Zero O school. I've got my Tiger Electronic handheld Sonic Spinball. My max score at this game is 18,440. I just played a game where I got 12,430. Uh, this game was released in 1994, as you see. The case says 1990, because that's when Tiger made the case. They made millions and millions and millions of them, expecting to get lots and lots of licensing opportunities from many, many corporations and companies for properties to produce their uh, LCD games, and of course they did. Zoom in a little bit. Uh, So you'll often see these things uh, for sale on like eBay, and it'll say that it's from 1990, even though it's impossible for this game to have existed in 1990, because it's just now the 30th anniversary year of Sonic the Hedgehog. And uh, that would actually make it 32 years old. And this game was actually released in 1994. This is actually a pretty decent uh, tiger game. Uh, you really can't go too wrong with pinball. A great thing about the tiger games, the LCD games, is that the uh, things represented actually look like the things they're supposed to represent. Instead of just a uh, massive, uh, potentially uh, unrecognizable or indistinguishable pixels. I'm getting the uh, Chaos Emeralds there at the top of the screen. I think I actually got all of them now. There were only two in the first level. Uh, this game doesn't uh, give you balls, you don't, you're not restricted to like three or five balls. Like in most pinball games, this goes by points. And, uh, it costs 100 points to, uh, launch a new Sonic. Instead of, uh, requiring that you, uh, expend another ball. You just buy them, essentially.
like for what it is, it gives a decent pinball feel. Like, you know. That's the game. That's it. All right. Push. That Sonic uh, Spinball. I'm Zero O School. And that's Sonic and Knuckles. Juneteenth, and you know what that means. That's right. We wait a second. Hey everybody, it's Juneteenth, and you know what that means. That's right. We're going to learn what general relativity says about gravity. Uh, if you ask just about anyone anywhere what gravity is, they will tell you that it is a force that pulls you to the center of the earth. It is the force that makes you stay on the ground. It is the force that pulls me back to the ground when I jump. But if you ask Albert Einstein what gravity is, he would say, it's imaginary. There's no such thing as gravity. 
he demonstrated that a accelerating frame of reference has the exact same properties as a gravitational pull. He also demonstrated that there is no pulling action on a body uh, upon the Earth. There is only the momentum of the Earth as it pushes its way through space and while it spins. Quantum gravity researchers want you to believe that Einstein never existed. They want you to believe that Newton's gravity, this grave pulling force, is still a mystery and confusing to us and we don't know what it means. But what's going on, why I wind up back on the Earth instead of continuing to float, is because the Earth is actually revolving and moving through space. Watch. It falls away. You know why? Because there's no gravitons. So what I need to do is put it into an accelerated frame of reference and suddenly it sticks to my hand. Gravitons come into existence. No, that's not gravitons. That's just momentum. Uh, it's the same force that pushes you back into your seat when you accelerate your automobile. So pretend that I'm the planet and that, uh, let's say, this tiny piece of tissue paper is a person. And then I have to put... I have to keep my hand perfectly, perfectly flat. Let's go. On. Come on. There we go. Yeah. Ah. And it stays. And it stays. And it doesn't stay because there are gravitons appearing between my hand and the tissue paper, but because it is part of an accelerating frame of reference. When you spin around in one direction, you are going to get dizzy, so you have to rotate in the opposite direction to uh, level yourself out, otherwise you're going to get all woozy and wobbly. Uh, here's a better demonstration with the whole tissue. And you can see that the gravitons appearing between my hand and the paper uh, go away if I adjust the uh, position of my hand. They just stop existing, because they never existed at all. Quantum gravity is a nonsense subject that has nothing to do with reality in any way, shape, or form. Uh, researchers who study it either have no idea that Einstein existed, or they're ripping off the entire planet and lying to the public everywhere. Hooray! Anyway, quit studying quantum gravity because it doesn't exist, it's not a thing, and there is no quantization for gravity, because gravity doesn't exist. General relativity is what, it, is, is what we've got. Things are moving relative to the general constant construct of everything. <sighs> Special relativity associates 100% perfectly with quantum mechanics. Special relativity also associates 100% perfectly with general relativity. Special relativity is the missing link that prevents us from unifying uh, quantum mechanics with uh, general relativity. For some reason, there are lots of researchers all over the world who are publishing papers right this second that say that there is this mysterious pulling force we don't understand how it operates. E, 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 1919, Einstein, Eddington, Eclipse, Experiment, 1919. We solved this. And for some reason, Researchers, researchers continue to work on it and try to find the, I guess, general relativitons that are causing everything to fall into each other. But what's actually going on is that stuff is falling through space, uh, and when it approaches something, the effect of its uh, motion against the structure of space itself causes time around it. To modulate. The bigger something is, the slower time goes relative to it, and the smaller something is, the faster time goes relative to it. So if you've got a tiny thing falling through space at a certain speed, and then it comes into contact with a much larger thing, uh, before they even actually touch, what's happening is that the smaller thing's uh, passage through time is being reduced, and this gives the illusion of it being pulled into the thing. It's just being slowed down in time. And gravitons, those mysterious particles that cause things to fall together, which are apparently appearing between my hand and this tissue, do not exist. 
or spinning causes gravitons to come into existence and stopping spinning makes them disappear. I don't know, you pick one. But anyway, Einstein explained to us that a uh, accelerated frame of reference is identical to what we consider gravity, so we can just get rid of gravity and replace everything that we consider gravity, which we now call gravitation, not gravity. No actual hard scientist refers to gravity, they refer to gravitation. Uh, Newton gave us gravity, and he was wrong. Brilliant researcher, brilliant scientist, invented the calculus that we know and use today. Great mind, but was wrong about why things fall. And Einstein was right. And that's my Juneteenth message. I am Zero O School. I've got my Sonic the Hedgehog 3 Tiger Electronic handheld. This is handheld game fans uh, old version. I got it on eBay at a really good price. He was getting rid of them, uh, some of his older games, and getting some newer, nicer copies. This one, as you can see, has been well loved throughout the years. Uh, on the back of every Tiger Electronic handheld uh, game, or just about, uh, it says copyright 1988, and that has nothing to do with the copyright date of the game. The game was uh, released uh, in 1994, as you can see right down there at the very bottom. Boom! 1994 Sega. Uh, and the case, as with almost all Tiger Electronic handheld cases, was produced in 1988. And they just had millions and millions and millions of these things printed up and used them to uh, produce games. And so they all say 1988. No, the game that you're playing is probably not from 1988. Let's see if we can uh, keep this thing uh, on screen. It has many levels. I'm guessing that this would essentially represent the tunnel run, if you remember uh, the actual Sega version, or the, the actual Genesis version, or uh, Game Gear version of uh, Sonic. Uh, it had a uh, tunnel run thing. And I imagine that that's what those uh, mini games are referencing. Hi. Okay. Over here. Tiger handheld games are not bad games, and they aren't uh, easy games, they just uh, look weird. And there are spikes in the floor, and I have to watch out for those.
I played this uh, several times before I realized that what was killing me was the spikes in the floor. See, it's just like a tunnel run. I don't know what those flashing dots are. I suppose you would probably want to see what happens when that tail button, tails button gets pushed. I can't, uh, tails comes and carries you. But that sprite doesn't seem to be showing, it's ju you just see Sonic kind of floating in the air. And that's weird. Right, you can only do it once per level.
probably the only especially great thing about uh, these games is that they pause at the start of each new level and you have to select that you want to continue playing so you have the opportunity to just stop there. But of course uh, this particular game and some others has a pause button. And it's really hard to see those spikes in the floor. There he goes, yay.
This is level 6, which is the last level in the game for the six Chaos Emeralds. Hooray. 184,300. Oops. And my actual height... And my actual high score is 187,800, so that is 187,000 even. So that was an alright run. <laughs> okay, then. That's uh, Tiger Electronic Sonic the Handheld... Sonic the Hedgehog 3 Handheld. And I am Zero O School. So I've got my courtroom scene uh, ready to go, but I am having trouble with the lighting. It just, uh, this is not how it's going to be lit. I want the figures to, like, these are not black figures, these are green figures and blue figures, and I want you to be able to see the colors on them, and the uh, light that I have is not uh, particularly uh, strong, so I'm getting, uh, so I'm going to uh, have to get a new little light for that, 
so we can uh, see their actual colors. But yeah, I've got the uh, courtroom scene ready to go. Got everybody ready to uh, perform. Got a new character there called uh, Claudia Nebula. Yes. Uh, Ziggy Smokes is there. There's Sphere 2 3 do Flame and Ice Guy. And here we've got Al. He's just kind of lazing. Okay, so now I've got the uh, correct lighting. And we can see uh, the uh, courtroom scene. We can see the figures are not just black pegs. Oh. And there's Al lazing back there. There's Ziggy with his cigarette. Flame and Ice Guy. Claudia Nebula. And... Ooh, Shan Fezenvest ah, is uh, going to uh, appear as Ziggy's lawyer. You see, I had to make him a briefcase there. Ugh. And that's going to be a... Uh, not slapstick, what is it? Screwball comedy sequence. Absolute screwball. This is going to be uh, based based uh, very uh, liberally on the Marx Brothers. Well, that was the show. I guess the gameplay on Sonic 3 went a little long. I guess I should cut that down a little. Well, that's the show. Uh, I hope you had a good time, hope you enjoyed Sonic, hope you enjoyed learning about uh, the difference between gravity and general relativity. Uh, hope you liked the uh, figures and the animation. Uh, hope you had a good time. Uh, have fun.